Good morning, church. If you have your Bibles, go to Ephesians chapter 2 this morning. Um, Before I pray for this morning's offering and for the message, there are two guests that you're going to experience today. And so I thought I'd introduce them to you so you're not surprised going, who are these people that are just up on stage? One is going to be preaching. The other one is going to be leading us in communion. And most of you probably already know Otis. Otis, come on up here. Otis has actually been in our church for a long time, and Otis is going to be sharing the word this morning. But what you might not know about Otis is Otis has been a part of our elder candidate year, and so we've started an elder candidate process to try to help give us some new new, uh, flavor, some new life, some new pastoral oversight, and Otis has got uh, a pastor's heart big time. And so he's been with us this whole year, and so we thought, hey, what an opportunity to kind of flex his pastoral muscles than to give him an opportunity to preach. And so that's what he's going to be doing this morning. And then for communion, you're going to see a young man. His name is Ben Griffin. His wife is Rochelle, who's starting a new worship team, if you've probably recognized her before. You might not notice Ben from time to time because he kind of comes in, holds the kids, and then dips out. But he is a solid man of God, and I'm trying to convince him to join next year's candidate um, uh, year, and I'm, I'm really putting on the pressure, so no no worries, Ben, if you choose not to, but Ben Griffin is going to lead in communion. So that those are our guests this morning. Will you bow your heads with me? Glorious Father, thank you for your word, and I thank you for what you're doing here at our church. Thank you for bringing men and women that are called to serve, that are called to use their gifts, their talents, and God, I just pray that the words that come out of Otis's mouth are not his, but yours. Fill him today, Lord, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet with your presence. Help him not to be nervous. Help him to just deliver the mail as you have written it, God. And I pray for Ben, Lord, as he leads us in communion. Help us to understand what it means to take communion and the reason why we do this in remembrance of your son, Jesus. Lord, be with our offering this morning. May it be a blessing to the community from which we serve. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Uh, I, I've actually uh, told James I would take the easiest passage of Scripture in Ephesians. So I did. No, actually, uh, Ephesians uh, 2 is really near and dear to my heart. And uh, we'll get into that in a minute. But as, you, uh, as we've started with Ephesians, uh, the SSPJ Tangdall uh, broke the ice uh, and explained to us what Ephesians, Paul, and all that. And then... Uh, James last week, he uh, uh, took the rest of the chapter one, and we talked about prayer. And I don't know, I, show of hands, uh, that touched me, right, man? And both sermons, actually. But yeah, last week was really something else. Uh, is it a genie or a god? Really? Oh, my. This is crazy. Um, this, this passage is just so fun. It was good for me to go through this in remembrance uh, of good times, so... Uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll get into it. If you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and turn to uh, Ephesians 2, uh, and we'll read through uh, 1 through uh, 10. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which, you were formerly, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them, we too formerly lived in the lust of the flesh, indulging in the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. I love this. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you've been saved. And raised up, here's the good news, and raised up with him and seated with us and seated us with him in the heavenly places so that in the ages to come, he might show surpassing riches of his grace in the kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Oh, I love it. For by grace, you've been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God and not a result of works, which no one can boast. It even gets better. For we are his workmanship, 
created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he prepared beforehand so that we might walk in them. Amen? Amen. The reason why I'm sitting is because uh, I've got a condition uh, on, on my back. Uh, it's where the sciatic nerve goes through the preformis muscle. It's called a syndrome, and it hurts really bad. So uh, if you see my eyes watering, uh, one, it could be a touch of motions, but the two, I'm, I'm not sleeping all that well. So just pray for me. So we're going to have a good time. You know, we have good news, bad news. Let's just start with the bad news first. Um, here, in verses 1 through 3, it's, it's not a good situation. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins. I mean, that's a spiritual separation from the living God. You are spiritually separated for eternity. Like, whoa, um, we're, we were dead. In which you formerly walked according the course of this world, according to the prince of the air of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them, we too formerly lived in the lusts of the flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh, uh, of the mind, by, and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. You know, this is not a very good resume. If we were to stop there, uh, we're, we're, we're in a world of hurt, literally. And uh, <laughs> yeah, w- without the Lord, we're doomed. And uh, yeah, I, I, I had this resume one time. Yeah. And I think we're all in this category. And we're speaking to everybody here. We were all here, right? Amen? We want to forget those days. Learn from them, but just press on. But uh, let me ask you today, does verses 1 through 3 describe you? Is this the condition that you're at today? Just stew on that if, if you are. Because I was there. Uh, you know, in 1973, that was back when the land was really young. Uh, 1973, <laughs> I was 14 years old, and my best friend John, his mom uh, was a Nazarene. And he says, Otis, you got to suffer revival week with me. you gotta, you got to help me through this. you got to help me through this. And so, okay, John, I'll do anything. You, you'll do anything for a best friend, won't you? Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, so... Here I am, I'm, it's a revival week, and we're sitting there listening, and there was a pastor that come in, and he spoke. And uh, he come to, he come to John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no one comes to the Father but through me. I was 14 years old, pretty girls in the room. Do you think I'm going to go forward? <laughs> uh, am I? Uh, no, no, I'm sitting there. But you know what? That, that verse burned in my heart. I never memorized the verse before that, but I knew that verse because I was it. It was, uh, God just told me I'm the way, and Otis, you need to deal with that. So, here we go. So, but I didn't. But before the end of the message today, you'll learn I did. Uh, So moving on to the next section, uh, Ephesians 2, 4, and 7. You know, I love this. I love scripture when it says, has words that, but God. You know, that's a foot stomp. When I was in school taking notes, uh, especially Air Force, they'd say, hey, this is going to be on a test. And they would stomp their foot. Well, this is a foot stomping verse right here. But God, being rich in mercy... Because of his what? Great love. And with his, and he loved us. Even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We'll get to verse 7 in a second. But I love that thing. But God, rich in mercy made us alive with Christ. Whoa, what I was before, what I am now, alive? That's amazing. And raised us up and seated us with him in his heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I mean, wow, not only forgave us, but now he has a home for us and we're going to go be with him. Yeah, here's a reference that I love. 
PJ's favorite, verse, uh, favorite uh, chapter is Ephesians. Mine is Colossians. And the uh, longer you get to know me, you'll know why. Colossians 2, 13 through 14. Paul kind of repeats himself to the different churches, but I think the message is the same, and it's good for us to hear it. And when you were dead in your wrongdoings, the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all our wrongdoings. Now we're going to go get legal. Having canceled the certificate of death consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile toward us, having taken it away. He removed it. All, our sin, our sin, he removed it. It's gone. I love this last piece, if you're following me. Having nailed it to the cross. That statement resounds in my soul. I hope it does yours. Because I love that phrase. I love the Word of God. I learned at the age of 14, the Word of God is very special. It doesn't leave. It stays. So, I love that. Having nailed it to the cross. Yes, can I get an amen? amen. Oh, it even gets better. Colossians 3, uh, over 1 through 4. Uh, here's where Paul talks some more. Therefore, if you have been raised with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on these things above, not on the things of the earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. We just sang this. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you will be revealed with him. Where? In glory. Uh, love you, family. I love you. I truly do. I can't wait. I, I truly can't wait. The, the longer it goes, man, the more I just want to be go be with Jesus. But anyway, we got more to do. Um, it's, it's only through Christ we now have status of, of sons and daughters of the Most High. You know, we, we're, we're children of God. But when I worked in Awana, you know, I, I upped the ante. And, you know, you theologians in the room, you can beat me up for this, but I considered clubbers who were in Christ, who asked Jesus into their life, little, little clubbers who know Jesus, that they are prince or princess of the king most high. And you know what? I, clubbers, they'd be fighting with their sister. Oh, remember, she's a princess of the king. What you say to her, her father's got something to say about that. So there's some responsibility with, with this sons and daughters. And, you know, it just, it's interesting. I, I, I think we need to up, the, up the, the bar on that because, man, you're a child of the Most High. And I think some responsibilities come with that. And I, I just think the princess thing, it's like when I met Sherry, you know, it's, you know, I don't want to make her mad. I want to hurt her, all this type of stuff. Because why? She's a princess of the Most High. And I always try to treat people like that. It's, it's good stuff. Fast forward from 1973 to 1976. Uh, now in basic training. Who goes to uh, uh, Texas in August? Uh, don't know what I was thinking, but me and one other guy went as a buddy system. I'm in basic training, and I got my back against the wall and I needed to call upon the name of the Lord. I needed some help. Fortunately, spent enough time in revival, knew how to, to pray and ask Jesus to forgive my sins. And uh, lights out this one night. I just said, Lord, forgive me. I need your help now. And, you know, everything worked out. It was perfect. It was great. And praise be to God for the Gideons. You know those, those Gideons who hand out Bibles? When we went through, we were able to take a Gideon Bible. It had Proverbs and Psalms, and it had the New Testament. And it had the sinner's prayer in the back. Why, lights out, you know, about six of us all of a sudden had the urge to go to the bathroom and go read our Bible. You know what was different about this time? When I read the Bible, I understood it. I understood it. It like, whoa, I know what I'm reading. Like, wow, this is cool. And I'm like, wow. So I finally got out of basic training and moved on. So let's move on to Ephesians 2.7. Uh, 
This is where it really gets good. So that in the ages to come, he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. In the ages to come. You know, here's another thing. So that. There's another word. So this verse starts, so that. All these things that he's done for us, we were raised up with him so that in the ages to come, he might show the surpassing riches of his grace. Um, So I I look at it this way. It's like um, the amazing grace is the gift that keeps giving. We are taking this into eternity. We are going to be praising God through eternity. And uh, we'll see in a song here later that it, it doesn't end. That's what's beautiful about our relationship with Jesus. It just doesn't end. It continues. So I love this. I look forward to that day. And uh, I look forward to the day of going home and, and just being part of the Lord's family. And you get a new body. You know, it won't hurt no more. Amen? <laughs> I'll be able to sleep at night. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. So Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Man, I love this verse uh, section. I've known it for a long time. You know, for by grace you've been saved through faith. That not of yourselves. It is a gift of God not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. We don't do anything, really, except have faith and pray to the Lord. What a big thing to do for what a rotten, wretched life I had. Is it that easy? Yes, it is that easy. And does he want to forgive? Yes, he wants to forgive. How about the thief on the cross? His... He doesn't have hours. He's got minutes to live. Okay, minutes. He's going to die soon. And, you know, and Jesus is right there. Okay, yeah, you'll be, in, you'll be in glory with me tonight. So it's just so too easy. So we're saved by grace through faith. We have to have that faith. We have to have that faith to step out. And boy, was I stupid. At the age of 14, I, I was just... I was, until I was 17, I was just dumb. Don't be an Otis. Whatever you do, don't be an Otis, okay? You hear the truth, respond. If there's anybody in here that has never heard the truth, respond, please. Don't, don't be dumb like me. So, and then it's not of ourselves. It's not by works. You know, we didn't, we didn't get this salvation. God did it for us. Having nailed it, where? On the cross. I love that phrase. I love that phrase is a gift of God, not of works. You know, as a gift, I think a gift, when you get it, you need to open it. You need, you need to treasure it. You, you need to bring it home to yourself, right? Use it, whatever it is, as a shirt, wear it. If it's a tool, use it. I think it's the same thing in the gift of God of salvation. We need to do something with that. We need to cherish it. We need to love it. Thank you, Jesus. Every time we hear things, we're just reminded, praise you, be the Lord. And it's like, I think my favorite, well, I know my favorite uh, holiday is Easter. I just love that day. You know why? It's, 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 every, it's our life. It's our life. Salvation in Christ is our life. Well, when I was in the Air Force, I'd gone from uh, tech school and went to Travis. Uh, They're in the Bay Area in California. And, uh, yeah, I had a roommate uh, show up. His, his name was Gil Gautier. Gil, Gil was a very deep thinker. Gil uh, really, I mean, couldn't believe it. He, he was like Lake Chelan, and I was like a pond compared. I mean, he, he thought very, very deep thoughts. Uh, he was a French-Canadian from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And Gil, uh, I, I did this on purpose, sorry, Lord, but I put my Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 verse out there on our desk that we shared, and uh, underneath the lamp, perfect holder. And I had the navigator's topical memory system. And I put it in the clear thing so he could see it. That poor Gil, he could not hurdle this verse. He was, an, he was a, a, a devout Catholic. Went, went to Mass every week. I mean, he, he met all the milestones up to where he was at uh, 18. And wow, he got a hold of that verse. And... 
he just couldn't hurdle it. Um, and I didn't know, because Gil was so deep, sometimes he wouldn't, it's hard to draw him out. But uh, I, was, I was in the Navigators, I was learning how to share the gospel, and I needed a dummy uh, or somebody to practice with. So, hey, Gil was always there. Hey, Gil, you want to sit in? I'm learning how to share the gospel. Oh, sure, I'll do that. So we did the bridge illustration, you know, all that, you know, Christ on one side, man on the other. The only th bridge is Jesus. Once again, I'm the way, the truth, the life. Um, and so we went through the, the time of sharing, and he didn't want to ask Christ in his life, so we walked and talked through that. But he, he was, again, helping me. So here we go. Gil, we go to sleep, and uh, it was that night. Gil, deep thinker, he, he asked Jesus to be his Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen? You never know. <laughs> a lesson, right? And, and, and all of a sudden, uh, he, he was turned into a wild man for Jesus. Um, he was an introvert, and he started to become an extrovert. How's that happen? Well, it's only through the Lord, right? And so what happened is Gil, he started reading his Bible. And he says, how is it I've gone to church all this time and I've never, never understood that it's by grace I'm saved through faith. And he couldn't, he couldn't hurl that. And he, he made an appointment and he met with the priest, uh, uh, a priest of priests in, in downtown. And, and I'm pretty sure Gil walked away sharing scripture. Um, and, uh, but he says, why didn't you ever tell me that I'm, I'm saved by grace? I'm saved by grace. Hey, you never heard that before. It was just really interesting. Um, and then Gil, uh, we had good time. and We share the gospel and we were part of the Navigator ministry. Gil went on to, uh, he uh, got his private pilot's license there at uh, uh, Travis. Uh, he, he went to college for a year and then he went up to Moody Bible Institute and uh, he joined JARS. And he's, uh, last I heard, he was a, uh, Pilot for jars, and they focus in on Bible translation and connectivity, electrical, internet, you know, power, computer, this type thing. But let me ask you, uh, here in the room, are, are you saved by grace? Yeah, are you? Yeah. So, yeah, and just... I'm thinking this, if you're here and you, you don't know Jesus as personal Lord and Savior, before you leave today, please see myself or one of the elders. Uh, we would love to just talk to you through that. And don't be a notice. <laughs> don't be a notice and put things off. That was, that was dangerous. Because if I would have died, I knew where I'd end up. I'd, I'd come before the white throne of grace, Lord Jesus on the throne, and the gavel comes down, and I'm, I'm, law, I'm just going to be sent away to the... To, the pit. So that was my future. But now, three years later, I come to know Jesus. And Ephesians uh, 2.10, as we uh, wrap this up, uh, Ephesians 2.10, I love this part, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared for heart beforehand so that you would walk in them. Notice, walk is an action verb. Um, we're doing something here. But uh, uh, just a couple thoughts I had on that. Was, we're, we're his workmanship. And we're handmade by the living God to do good works. I mean, isn't this, isn't this amazing? He, he makes us from wherever we're at. And we have different passions, abilities, and but wherever we're at, God's going to use us. He wants to use us. And, uh, you know, uh, he, he wants to, uh, to help us understand our position in Christ and how we can serve others. Yeah. So let me ask you, uh, how, how and where are you employing uh, your good works from this workmanship? Are, are, are you engaged? I know we have greeters here. They do it every week. We have people make coffee every week. I mean, they're engaged. They're engaged. And, uh, 
But I think, too, is good works also means outside the church, down the street. You know, it's crazy. I, I uh, don't want to brag about myself, but I've got the gift of serving uh, when my body's not broke. Um, and I love to help people. I love people. And, uh, and I think it was started with my, my dad's meat market. And uh, we had free delivery. It was called Otis. And I got to deliver groceries to uh, <laughs> widows. And uh, some of them couldn't hardly get around. I, I was amazed. They should have been probably in assisted living. But yeah, and I'd go take care of them. And, uh, and that's where I learned to sit down and talk to elderly people. Now I am one. <laughs> but it's great to sit there and talk to them. And uh, one lady had scoliosis so bad she was really bent over. But she, was, she so enjoyed the time together. And I think young people, they need to learn that, hey, just because they're old doesn't mean that they don't enjoy talking with you. Those were precious moments. Didn't know it at the time because I'm a dumb teenager. Once again, you knew how dumb I was. But, uh, yeah, it, it was just really precious. And now... Uh, I was, here comes a big storm, and it just whipped into our housing area, limbs hanging off the roofs and the road. It looked like a war zone. So after church, I'm a good Baptist. I went to church, you know, life group, and then I went home. And then I dig out my truck, and I saw, and I'm cutting things up. Well, that was a catalyst. People just started coming out of their houses. It was just, it turned into this big group of people, of neighbors, just starting to clean up, right? And what it was amazing is there was two people said, uh, Otis, what church do you go to? Because I told him, hey, I just got out of church and I'm, I'm just able to help out now. What church do you go to? Why, it, what I learned is by going out and helping and serving others, sometimes that cracks the egg for conversation. You know, it's really cool and it's neat. That lady, she loves Jesus and every time I go by, I beat my horn and wave at her. It's pretty fun. And the other guy, he was a devil dog marine and combat veteran. And, you know, I just loved on him. I just, I just loved him uh, as a person. Um, and he was a Christian, rough around the edges. But, you know, it, it opened up discussion type thing. And uh, this week, uh, we were in the engagement project, which is on Tuesday nights. It just started with the first one. I just want to throw a plug in there. Uh, this week, we learned... Uh, God made us to be fruitful. Fruitful. He made us to be fruitful. Uh, moms, dads, kids made us to be fruitful in that regard, made us to be fruitful in our ministry, made us to be fruitful as people, and, and especially for the good works, you know, of how we go out and serve folks. I mean, we're supposed to be fruitful. That's how God wired us. He knitted us in a womb, Eventually, we come to know him, and now he helps us grow and become this serving that's out there. It's pretty cool. So next week, uh, we're going to learn about the fall. Well, I say Tuesday. And if you're available, 6.30, I encourage you to come. It is, it's, it's awesome. So enough of that. you got more coming. But God made us to be fruitful. Just hold that thought. And uh, I thought in order to wrap up today, um, I, we would talk about... Uh, John Newton. Uh, John Newton uh, was the author. He was author of many things, good writer. But John Newton was uh, the author of Amazing Grace. And uh, Sherry and I, one of the rarest times that we ever traveled together, okay? We went to Charleston. I was there for a two-week meeting on the C-17 program. And uh, we stayed downtown, and it was nice. It was like a vacation for Sherry. She'd get up and walk around all over the city. You know, I'd come home, wore out, you know, from sitting all day. Probably why I'm in this condition. But anyway, um, she says, hey, you got to see this. You got to see that. And we just had a good time walking around. Well, one of the things, uh, we went to the Charleston Museum, and we came to the slave ship. And I'm telling you what, folks, my life changed. Um, I, I didn't throw a slide up on what the what it looked like, but how, how they loaded the slaves up in that ship. They laid them down, and they didn't have much room, and they stacked them one on top of one another. I didn't want to get too graphic. I, I didn't want to show it because kids don't need to see that. We just need to teach in history that that was a bad time. 
But I looked at that knowing, because we're homeschoolers, and in fact, Jessica, husband Alex is here, <laughs> the homeschoolers. And one of the things we had is this book on the history and the story behind the hymns. It's very important. Oh my gosh, that's why you see me wipe my eyes. There's a story behind every hymn, and there's a big one behind Amazing Grace. Um, but having looked at that, I knew he was the author of this. I knew, I thought, he was a slave trader. Oh my gosh. It's like, what? And I looked at that scene and how we treated humanity. Why are we not teaching that today? Well, slavery still goes on. We still enslave people, you know, downtown, you know, sex and all that other stuff. We, people are enslaved. We need to stop it. It's just bad. But anyway, let's get back to John Newton. And uh, John Newton was raised, uh, he, he was uh, born in 1725, so here's the era, 1725 to 1807. Uh, he was raised by a Puritan mother for almost seven years. Two weeks before he turned seven, uh, she passed away. His father was a sea captain, and at age 11, he joined his father to work on the cargo ship. Well, he was a little misfit. Uh, he caroused, drank, cursed. Uh, he, was, he was not your model citizen. Um, and finally, uh, the Navy, uh, British Navy, uh, drafted him uh, into the service. And he had some kind of status because of his knowledge of ships and how he could run them. Um, so he's uh, working for his dad and got drafted into the Navy, and then he, then he attempted to escape, right? So after attempting to escape, they caught him again. He was going to desert. Check this out. He had eight dozen lashes and was busted down to regular seamen. He became the lowest person on the ship and continued to work. Um, so that was pretty miserable. So then he says, okay, I, I, I need out of here. So then he begged them to put him on a slave ship. And the slave industry back then was, there's money involved. There was money to be made, as sad as that is. And uh, he started working a slave ship, and then he became a sea captain. He's running his own ship of slave trade, and he's making money. And uh, he's, he started reading some of the writings, uh, early writings about Christ. So his conversion was kind of slow. But uh, he was coming home, probably from Charleston, um, off the coast of Ireland. There was a big storm, this huge storm. It, it was battering the ship. It was listing. It was taken on water, and they're pumping, and he's, the whole crew is frantic. And so finally, he called upon the name of the Lord. God, please help us. And they limped. Somehow, God, praise God, they, uh, they limped that ship back into port. But... Uh, God spared them, and they knew it. Every member on that boat knew it. We, we were done. We should have been off the coast of Ireland down there somewhere. But he had slow conversion, and then he uh, became a writer. He started writing, and his writings were very rich. Once again, this guy's not really educated. He didn't go to theological school, but he was talking about the Lord, talking about life, talking about how God works in us. And he became, much to a lot of people's chagrin, uh, an Anglican cleric in Olney, Olney, England. And he was not your normal pastor. He, he was like a Billy Graham. You know, he, he took this grace to the streets. He was, when he was converted, it kind of rem, rem, remind me of Paul, as he took it to the streets, he would have, he would go in and open up a hall and just, he would share his story. He'd go back to the shipwreck, he'd go back to his horrible life as a slave trader, and God forgave me. Could you imagine? And he's just outreaching people. I'm sure there was converts. And again, being an Anglican stuff shirt pastor, no, he wasn't that bold. He was down to earth, and he knew his grace. So uh, if, do we have an amazing grace next? Let's take a look at a couple verses here and see, see if this resounds. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a what? Wretch like me. I mean, he was a wretch, sold humans, 
help get them to the States and England. I was lost, but I'm now found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear. Pretty sure it was on the ship. The hour I first believed. And I'm pretty sure when he was praying to God, he was in the process of, of doing something because they, they were taking on so much water, they had to man the pumps and, uh, until they got back to port. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. Now let's look at the, you know, the, the, the latter verses here. Uh, you know, with the but God, four through seven. How God's, we're going to be with the Lord. We're going to go be part of him. That's our citizenship up there. But we, when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as a sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. You know what? Amazing grace, it's that gift that keeps on giving. So it, it's, it's just that gift that keeps on giving. And... Uh, once again, I think this is a very, very special, special portion of Scripture. I love it. Um, but what I'd like to do is, uh, since we have communion uh, today, uh, we're going to close this a little short. And uh, what I'd like to do is pray in uh, my favorite book again. It's a prayer from Paul. And I used to do this when we had a wana, when we were going to be not seeing each other for a while. And I would just close in prayer because I think the word of God and a prayer that comes from Paul really wraps it up, really sums it up nicely. You know how we were lost. I mean, we're doomed in, in uh, verses 1 through 3. Pretty much just depicts on how what a lost state we were in. But praise be to God, but God. Okay, and then we responded to that, asked Jesus into our life. Now our citizenship is in heaven. You know, it's interesting. When Sherry and I were in Okinawa, um, we were citizens of the United States. And if you're a citizen of the United States, you represented USA. So when you're out and about in public, you're on your game because you didn't want to offend the other people. So you know what? I was thinking about that while I was preparing here. Our citizenship is in heaven. And if our citizenship is in heaven, that should really change how we interact with people. Church people, lost people, people we don't even like. I, I think we could have a bigger impact if Otis would really live up to that. You know, if we would all live up to that. I mean, have an impact with people that they would know, that they would say, hmm, they're a Christian. There's something different about their life. So let's close in prayer here. Uh, I'm reading from Colossians uh, 9 through 14. For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with the power according to his glorious might, for the attaining of steadfastness and patience, joyously giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in his inheritance of the saints in light. He rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. Jesus, we thank you for that. We thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the grace that keeps giving forever. Jesus, help us to go today and have a world impact on uh, people around us, uh, only in your grace. Lord, help us to be your messengers. We want to commit this time to you. And all God's people said, amen. amen.